According to the authors of Punk and Aesthetic, the word punk was first used in Shakespeare in 1623 to describe a well-dressed harlot. It was used to refer to a prostitute starting in the late 16th century. Punk has stood in for a rabble of words that can be applied to people of shady or unscrupulous dealings, as well as those who don't conform to sexual norms, refuse to play by the commonly accepted rules of society, or think the rules are just plain stupid and ignore them. This can be linked to Ferdinand de Saussure's concept of the signifier and the signified. The signifier is what is seen or heard, in this case the word punk. The signified is the idea of what is meant to be seen, in this case what society knows as the word punk. The question of when punk culture arose has been a furious debate. This is for the reason of everyone's different definition of punk culture. It can be said that it arose in both the United States as well as in the UK around the early and mid 1970s. In the United States, bands such as the Ramones, Minor Threat, Black Flag, The Germs, The Stooges, etc. made their debuts at CBGB's, a club in New York City. Their music was fast-paced, hard and short, usually with lyrics about political, anti-establishment beliefs. Meanwhile, in the UK, the economy was in turmoil, as well as unemployment rates being extremely high. English youths were angry. The Sex Pistols and The Clash began their own English punk movement. By 1976, punk rock spread around the world. It became a major cultural phenomenon in the United Kingdom. For the most part, punk took root in local scenes that tended to reject association with the mainstream. Albums like God Save the Queen promoted anti-government and anti-establishment ideologies and became the hallmark of the British punk scene. As the punk movement emerged, fans began representing their punk values and thoughts through the appearances brought with the genre. The beginning of punk fashion as we know it began with Malcolm McLaren who created a boutique labeled Sex in London to sell punk oriented clothing and accessories. The Ramones iconic leather jacket became a standard punk wardrobe choice. French anthropologist Claude Lévi-Strauss coined the term bricolage meaning a mode of adaptation in which many things, mostly commodities, are put to uses for which were not intended and in ways that dislocate them from their normal or expected context. Dick Hebbage applied the term to punk subculture. He applied it to the do-it-yourself nature of punk fashion. The best example of this would be the safety pin, a common household item that became a decoration that punks wore in the 1970s as well as now, either on the common leather jacket, ripped jeans, as a necklace, and sometimes even as a piercing. Ebbage called the act of using the safety pin a signifying practice. Johnny Rotten of the Sex Pistols is said to be the first one to practice this. The chain lock can also be called a signifying practice in punk culture. Sid Vicious, also from the Sex Pistols, was said to do this first. Various hairstyles became a characteristic of the punk aesthetic, such as the Liberty Spikes or the Mohawk, which were commonly dyed bright neon colors. Nezra Basik says these styles rose to popularity due to the punks wanting to become socially unacceptable in society. When living the punk lifestyle, you usually converse with the people of your same ideologies. A true punk follows the do-it-yourself philosophy as well as attempting to be a social misfit in society. Punk rock bars and concerts are a place where punks gather to relish in the glory of punk nature that society will never fully understand. So what is a fanzine? The American writer and academic Stephen Duncombe describes fanzines as little publications filled with rantings of high weirdness and exploding with chaotic design, where the producers privilege the ethic of the do-it-yourself, make-your-own culture, and stop consuming that which is made for you. Punks eventually rejected the word fanzine altogether and changed it to punk scene. During the Thatcher era in the UK, punk scenes were usually banned. Any punk scene that was printed was underground and was considered illegal. Punk scenes were a way that punks could read about other punk scenes around the world. Punks could share their collective beliefs through print and say what they hoped the punk rock future would bring. They also offered band and album reviews. Hey guys, it's Riley and Michelle. Hey! <laughs>
for DIY Punk Scene, and we are here to promote the shit out of issue yeah. six. Oh, oh yeah! yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, now that we're done with that, we figured we'd give you a little sample of what's to come, like the band. You know, awesome music you should be checking out. The articles music. that you can, the articles you can read when you get your own copy, mm -hmm. and everything like that, and such as, and so on. And Therefore, <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be jam packed with some great bands you should definitely look out for. Uh, we got everything you could possibly want to read about punk music, punk fashion, everything about punk. I don't know, it's all 40 pages. Many music writers and academics have argued that the culture that comes with punk rock ceases to exist. I would argue that they are correct about the classic punk rock culture, but are greatly wrong for being gone altogether. Punk culture still continues to grow in the world today. Um, the ideas that were hatched in these really tiny, weird cells underground, they, are, they have manifested to be hugely influential on the world. There still are DIY scenes across the whole planet. In any country you can think of, there is a punk scene going on. I don't know how different is the honest to the rest of the world because I've never been overseas. All, I could, all I've seen is what I've seen on record covers. During the 90s when the uh, war broke, you know, because of all the lack of enthusiasm because a lot of bands uh, were playing just their hometowns because they were still restricted, they couldn't get uh, gigs outside Serbia. <laughs> Been in my country is getting better and better, so it was a little bit down a couple of years ago, but there are lots of new kids starting a punk band again, and it's more and more bands coming to my country again. And top of that is calling pro punk rock object. We have begun to listen to punk at 12 years, and the first group which we have begun to listen to was Green Day. Israel is a very small country, so there are very little people here that listen to music such as punk. They are used to listen to Israeli music, so it's hard to be a punk rock man. that came to us through punk rock can actually reach out to a lot of people, then it's a good thing that it's happened. So there you have it, punk culture. Society doesn't understand it, and probably never will, but it's not going anywhere.